session about finished and upcoming projects in LMG, where we will essentially talk about what uh, the various teams in LMG have been doing over the last couple of months and what we will be looking at next. So first, my team and I are going to talk about uh, projects in the AOSP engineering team. Then John will give an update on Heike uh, in AOSP. And then Jobin will give an update on the, uh, what has been going on the, uh, in the art team. So we have a huge list of projects that got finished. This is what all teams in LMG did. So we had a memory allocator analysis uh, where we patched Bionic with the different implementations of the malloc function and its related functions like realloc free. Then a file system analysis where we analyzed what file systems are best for use with AOSP. We updated LCR quite a bit, switching to AOSPN and uh, adding more patches, porting our old patches. We built up increased participation in upstream development, tried to upstream the uh, system UI carrier patch that was given to us by one member. The status there is it's currently still in the review queue, but everything has been patched to work with post and master and cleaned up a little, so it should get in as soon as someone upstream takes a look at it. Then we started a new LCR build that focuses on uh, devices with low memory. We managed to get the kernel to build with the Clang compiler. And, uh, the resulting system boots, uh, runs Android uh, with a couple of minor drawbacks like some applications not working, uh, which are still being debugged. We got Opti integrated into the MLCR builds, which are the Linaro releases for members only. And uh, on the Chromium side, we got a 64-bit build for, uh, of Chromium uh, with Clang and GCC for, uh, for ARM v8 and also for ARM v7. We updated the internal libjpg turbo to 1490 and updated Chromium's version of Zlib to 128. The art team improved instruction scheduling and uh, instruction selection, investigated the new JIT mode, did some performance investigation on 32-bit. High key uh, board was enabled on AOSP upstream. We have an open graphics stack for Android enablement for uh, running, for example, on a Nexus 7, which is based on Freedrino. We always rebase AOSP patches to tip kernels. Uh, we are not going to get into details on this one because Amit uh, just covered it in the previous talk. We are trying to enable Nexus devices with mainline kernels. And of course, the uh, mainline AOSP user space on top of it is already enabled. We have a GBM, mini GBM based uh, Grelog implementation. In upstream DMA buff support in uh, Mesa for Android EGL use. Okay, next, we are going to get some details on memory analysis. Satish, this is probably what you want to talk about. So yeah, so primary focus was uh, to analyze the various memory allocators uh, that can be used on the low memory stuff. Uh, but we got some interesting results though. Uh, and we have tried to patch up uh, the various memory allocator algorithms such like JMalloc, DLMalloc, that was a part of uh, the regular OSP. Uh, uh, the couple of new one is NetMalloc, TCMalloc. TCMalloc is a default uh, memory allocator as a part of Chromium. It's being used now. Uh, there's a uh, MUSL malloc. Uh, MUSL is a full uh, libc implemented, which is uh, POSIX, uh, POSIX compliant. Uh, we have just picked up the allocation part and we have tried to analyze the same thing. There's something called uh, TLSF. It's a two-level segregated uh, malloc algorithms. And 
One is uh, the localized uh, allocator. It's on the GPL 3.0, but uh, there is some glitch over there, so we couldn't able to analyze for the large number of allocations. Uh, <coughs> the the main challenges that we found is uh, we need to write the couple of pattern uh, routines for the the 64-bit platforms and uh, the, the few dummy and the wrapper calls which are required for the bionic integrations. Uh, we also put uh, the few benchmark which comes as a part of the regular uh, memory allocations is uh, the TLSF and the T-test. T-test comes with the NADMALOC and we have wrote the, the fragmentation analysis script which can basically run the test uh, various uh, memory use case and then just measure the what are the available memories at the runtime and what is the fragmentation impact on that. So uh, we'll talk about this uh, uh, if somebody interested we can go through in detail uh, in the USP microconference. But just to summarize, uh, uh, in terms of the static reduction, uh, the NADMALOC has uh, really good stuff, NADMALOC and the TLSF. Uh, uh, but uh, if you look at the runtime performance with the multi-threaded application, TC malloc has a really good performance. Uh, uh, the, there is a, some configuration called JMALOC SVLT. It just disabled the, the thread cache and it, it, it's not giving a good performance though. I don't know why it's existing in the USB configuration right now. Uh, could be good, might be for a good reason. I don't know though. Uh, but when we run the, the, the fragmentation scripts, we found that the JMALOC has a really good runtime memory available with the use case when the couple of applications like video or the image or the you are downloading something, uh, they have the good amount of memory available at the runtime. Uh, the same case with the TC malloc, but TC malloc just pulled the memory initially and keep it in the, the user space rather than it's being available uh, 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 as a generic memory which can be used for the other space. Uh, the net malloc, uh, the developer, He's, uh, we haven't found the support from the developer, so he just points to the, the J malloc for the future use. So there might not be a support for the net malloc. On the file system, uh, we have investigated a couple of uh, stuff. Uh, we have started with the ext4, uh, the btrs is nothing but the bitree based file system. And then the, the, uh, the one is the FreeFS, it's implemented by the Samsung, the NeelFS and the SquashFS. Uh, <coughs> the, the BTRFS, we have tried the various compression algorithms, uh, Zlib and the uh, LZ4 also. So we have generated a couple of uh, analysis. Uh, it's, it's in detail, we will go through the, uh, in the USP conference. Uh, so we have measured from the small, data load to the, the higher data load up to 512 MB. We have also uh, analyzed the disimpact and the fragmentations for these file systems. Uh, the main challenges are, you know, just, it's just like how we can hook up this file system to the regular Android build. Uh, that was the main challenges and the couple of benchmarking tool which are not available in the Android that we have put it uh, just, just like Boni and the IHO. We also written few mm, scripts which can just overload the Android system with a couple of use cases and just analyze what is a disimpact and uh, what is a read and write uh, performance when the system gets overloaded. <coughs> so all the graphs are available. I think we will go through the AOSP microconference again. But the in nutshell, uh, the F2FS and the EXT4 has a really good performance when the, the data load size is really small. It's like 4 MB or 1 MB. The F2FS is a really good perform for the write uh, and the EXT4 for the read. NILFS has a very good score on the SQLite operation, <laughs> but the only drawback is it just overload uh, the disk space. So we need to regularly run the garbage collector in the background. So it, it's not, I mean, it's not recommended for the MRA system yet though. 
the scotch fs has a google good buffer io read so it can be used for the re all all the read only partitions and as the name suggests square of course itself is a compressed file system so it can't be used for the data partition but it can be used for the vendor binaries and uh, and the, all the system level libraries btrfs has a really good numbers uh, in terms of all the data loads over the 4 mb uh, but the only drawback with the btrfs is the high cpu utilization because they are running on more number of threads in the background compared to the other file system and yeah there is a high risk associated with the recovery when the power goes off so yeah, can be useful for the all the power backed up system, maybe in flight entertainment system, maybe recording devices. Uh, the one good idea is we can make use of the hybrid system where the based on the data load, we can put the data on the various partitions, uh, which can uh, give us the good read and the write at the run time. We still need to perform the impact on the file system at as it is. We'll talk about more uh, during the OSP conference, but this is the overall summary on the file system. Thank you. Uh, here, uh, just a summary about uh, what we do on for the LCR in the past uh, six months. Um, till August, uh, we released, uh, released images for Heike and Juno based on the Marshmallow version. And uh, from uh, September, uh, we released uh, based on Nagot. Uh, and with the, uh, with the help from uh, other teams, uh, we improved uh, the we uh, improved the build process and the release process, and uh, and also we uh, released more files, more artifacts uh, to help uh, user. Uh, understand and reuse the release images. We also uh, integrate the OPT uh, into a um, member uh, LCR with fully uh, automated uh, validation. Uh, also, uh, as the list here, switch to EAS kernel for to know build and uh, uh, update mm, and replace the uh, existing uh, patches, optimization patches for uh, Marshmallow to uh, Nagot. Uh, that's not uh, finished yet. We will continue to uh, other optimizations for Nagot in the future. Uh, we will con uh, also we will add uh, support uh, uh, other support uh, support for other bots like uh, uh, S15 and S uh, in into S LCR. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. So on the tool chain side, we modified AOSPM so it can be built with GCC 6.2 and Binutils 2.27. So far there's only uh, five patches that we need to make that work. Two have been accepted, three are not, uh, still in the queue for acceptance because upstream isn't really serious about looking at them anymore because for NN on, only Clang will be supported as a compiler. So far, we haven't done this on Android N yet, but that is definitely still on our to-do list. And given N is transitioning to Clang toolchains, we uh, 
have investigated uh, some more of LLVM and Clang work. We can now build AOSPN uh, in AOSP master with Clang versions based on upstream master instead of the, uh, just a version that is included in AOSP. Just some work in progress on creating CI builds of Clang to, uh, to verify performance impacts and also to detect errors as soon as they happen upstream, not waiting for a new release or anything. And we are continuously adapting the user space to make sure it remains compatible. Uh, for example, when Clang is adding new warnings, we sometimes have to get rid of the dash W error or fix some code preferably. Sometimes we run into new assertion failures because new versions of Clang uh, detect more things going wrong. Sometimes, of course, we also run into bugs because we are dealing with compiler snapshots. And based on that, we report those bugs and upstream fixes whenever possible. Another key goal uh, between the last connect and this one was increasing upstream participation. Every member of the AOSP engineering team repeatedly gets the task to do at least 10 upstream reviews every month. We are continuing to update projects in the external tree to newer upstream versions because those don't seem to be all that actively maintained in AOSP upstream and it would be nice to have more active maintenance there and we are trying to set ourselves up to help out there. So far there's limited acceptance uh, probably just because people upstream are not devoting a lot of time to looking at the external projects. And we also didn't have to, um, enough resources to actually make sure everyone does those 10 upstream reviews because of some assignments were being, uh, being pulled off to other tasks. But we do think that upstream work is getting even more important with Android One style devices that have a fixed system partition that will be used for every device becoming more common. And also with Android moving to monthly security updates and some vendors really taking heat over not applying them in time, it's definitely a good idea to stay closer to upstream AOSP and uh, members will probably start realizing that and uh, try to stick closer to upstream, which just means all the patches that are relevant should be upstreamed. Next thing was the system UI carrier status display, which is a patch that comes out of the Qualcomm tree. Essentially, it uh, modifies the code in AOSP that displays the carrier status. So where you see one bar to four bars uh, so that carriers can customize it. What we did so far is rebase it to AOSP master. The patch we got was based on Android 5. We cleaned up a couple of minor issues whenever unnecessary API changes, rebased it again when AOSP N got released. So from our view, this is looking good, but it's not yet accepted upstream probably again because upstream has slightly different priorities. Next is Ion. Laura, do you want to come up? Um, it's the one, okay, yeah. So Ion as the framework I'd probably say is, make, is making progress, although it's still slower. Um, the eventual goal is still to try and move Ion as a self-contained framework into drivers and Android, um, similar to what had happened to the binder driver. I think that's uh, moving f forward. I think we'll probably just focus on the user sp space APIs first, and then as people um, come up with use, use cases for in kernel, then we can look at adding the in kernel APIs. As far as work that Doc done, um, there's been some work about cleaning up the ioctals. Uh, those have generally been reviewed, and I just need to do a little bit more work there to uh, add in a few more ioctals to hopefully make the ABI work easier. Um, 
So uh, I wrote this slide last week and I just got, before this, I just got done uh, chatting with um, Arnd about uh, some of the platform device support and um, this is another case where I don't think it's actually quite as done as I thought it was. Um, so I think some more work needs to be done there to try and figure out exactly what to do for uh, specifying ION platform support just because there's still some objections to having um, ION described in the, in the device tree, especially for the hope of what goes on, um, it, hopefully for eventually moving clients away from ION is that they don't want that support in the device tree just because the device tree is supposed to be an ABI, so moving away from that is kind of difficult. And then cache coherency is another one that's uh, been sort of a sore sticking point. Um, ION currently does the explore, has, makes some uh, calls to DNA cache APIs which are incorrect. Um, so I've been tr come up with a couple of different proposals about trying to do those and um, none of them have really stuck. So it's sort of two steps forward, 1.5 steps back as far as what exactly to do there. So um, I need to take some more time to think about that. But um, so I, I think part of a lot of the problems um, uh, it's uh, sort of gotten stuck with ION is that there isn't sort of a clear picture about exactly what ION is actually being used for. So I'm gonna talk about this in the uh, AOSP session on, on Thursday. So if you have opinions on exactly how you're using ION or what exactly you'd like ION to do, um, please come and contribute because I think that'll go a long way towards helping uh, things go out of staging, so thanks. Hey, so I'm John. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the work that's been going on uh, for Heike and AOSP over the last six months. Um, gonna try to be fast, I'm sorry, I've got a, list, a lot of slides. I know the art guys have a lot of stuff to cover too. Uh, so in case you missed it at the last connect, uh, Heike is officially supported in AOSP, so that means that everything that you need to build images for Android can be found in AOSP, uh, so you, get, you can get everything straight from Google. Um, this has been a kind of, we've been continuing this collaboration uh, we've been working closely with a number of folks at Google, um, but we're also making sure to submit all of our changes uh, through the public AOSP Garrett, so we're trying to kind of work as uh, community collaborators uh, out in the open as much as possible. Um, a whole bunch of features have been added, a couple things to highlight here, so we've updated to NuGet uh, basically the week it was released. Uh, we've been moving, we moved to the 4.4 uh, uh, stable based kernel and we've been staying current with the Dash stable branch. Um, uh, other great features, so we've added HDMI and USB audio thanks to uh, uh, a lot of work um, that Vishal put in. Um, we've uh, added also, uh, Haljin has done a ton of work trying to get the bootloader uh, so that the bootloader source is also integrated into AOSP. Um, he's also added a whole bunch of Android specific features to uh, the bootloader including A boot support, the unique serial number setup and uh, the fast boot boot support. Um, Amit added the USB tethering, which has been great, and uh, then also the uh, overlay manager and the fic debugger are two features that uh, Dimitri from Google uh, added himself. And so this has kind of been one of these nice things where, you know, we're getting a lot of uh, kind of teamwork across Google and a lot of different features being added um, from different places. Um, some of the work that's been in progress, so the energy aware scheduler, um, uh, there's been a lot of talks about this. We'll have some talks to on Thursday in the uh, uh, AOSP Micro Summit. Um, there's been a, a lot of help from Lenaro teams to help benchmark uh, EAS running on uh, uh, Heike, um, and then also some of the initial work to use uh, Heike as a kind of reference example of how to integrate uh, uh, EAS into, uh, I, I guess, uh, an, an Android pl platform. Um, it's been a lot of collaboration between uh, uh, ARM and Google and Lenaro, um, so I really appreciate a, a lot of the help that uh, the folks at Google and ARM have, have provided here. Um, and this managed to get uh, EAS merged into the Android 4.4 uh, tree and also integrated into Heike last week. Um, we also have Opti integration, so we've been working with the security team uh, in Lenaro uh, to get uh, the Opti kernel uh, uh, driver enabled um, against the Heike AOSP kernel. Uh, they also have Opti support for the bootloader that hasn't yet landed in AOSP, but we hope we'll have that soon. Um, we also have the overlay manager. This is a feature that Dimitri at Google uh, actually has implemented. It's kind of nice because a lot of times the Android uh, devices are, are fairly static devices. They maybe uh, have USB expansion, but that's about it, and that's probable. Um, so being able to handle uh, a, a lot of these non-probable buses on a device board um, is, is really difficult. So Dimitri came up with a solution which basically allows a driver to be able to select different uh, device tree overlay objects that are in the device tree um, and be able to select which configuration to come up at boot. And so this allows us to support a number of different uh, uh, mezzanine boards um, on Hayaki 
without having to change the kernel. Uh, you still have to specify a boot option. Um, and this is something that uh, Dimitri's been working on, making kind of a generic implementation and submitting upstream, and it may actually end up being pushed instead of in a driver, but it more into kind of the device tree uh, core. Um, also, uh, factory images, uh, 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 this is something, again, uh, Vishal has been super helpful with. I uh, want to say thanks a lot um, for. <laughs> uh, so this basically, um, one of the problems we've had over the last six months is that if you did want to create images for um, Hikey, you had to basically sync the AOSP source, which depending on your connection could take very many hours to days, um, and then spend a lot of time building the entire thing to get something to flash. And so this is something that, you know, I think was kind of a barrier for a lot of people to tinker with kind of the latest releases. Um, and so we've now got factory images uh, direct from Google. You've got the URL there. Um, it's as simple as downloading the zip file. Uh, you set the jumper on high key uh, for recovery mode and then do the flash all script and pull off that jumper and reboot. Um, so it's, it's a lot easy. It's a lot easier. Um, a lot of work that uh, Amit has been doing as well across the common AOSP effort. He, he talked a little bit about these in a previous talk here. Um, so he did a deep review of the Android uh, common 4.4 tree and sent a lot of reverts for obsolete features. Um, and Heike has been useful for uh, being able to validate that those uh, features aren't needed. Um, we've also added uh, the appended DTB support, which was needed for the A boot image uh, support at the bootloader. Um, we up we basically took the upstream timer slack NS support that was there to replace uh, the uh, uh, PR set timer slack PID feature in the Android tr kernel. Uh, uh, and we, so we got that feature upstream, but then we backported that to the 4.4 tree and did the user space integration to make sure that Android could use that. Um, there's also the EAS forward port uh, from the Android 3.18 tree to Android 4.4. And then a lot of prep work that Amit's been doing uh, for the next uh, long-term stable based uh, Android 4.9 tree. Um, now this one isn't connected specifically to AOSP, but we've also been using HiKey in uh, Rob Herring's generic build project, and this basically allows us, as you saw in the demo, to support a whole bunch of different uh, devices and even across architectures out of a single build directory um, using kconfig. I think it's really awesome, and I hope to see kind of more support for this. Um, Still a bunch of to-dos. Uh, uh, we want to try to see about getting uh, Opti fully enabled as well as uh, helping uh, Google get Trusty running up on IOSP or on Hikey. Um, and so that way we can get kind of uh, both uh, Opti and Trusty coexisting and sort of make sure, sure that we don't step on each other's toes and uh, kind of allow people to kind of compare and contrast the different implementations and, and see what we can do there. Um, I also want to see AB updates and partitioning. Um, partition switching uh, uh, to be added. This is something that's going to require uh, uh, enablement across both the kernel and the bootloader. Um, we also uh, need to move forward in the next uh, 4.9 kernel. Um, I also want to work with the Mali developers to try to find a way to avoid needing custom tweaks for Hikey so we can use just kind of the off-the-shelf Mali uh, driver. Um, and then also uh, something that's kind of come up with N is that we're starting to see a little more pressure on the one gig variant of Hikey. Um, and so I want to see if we can get some of the memory reduction efforts that LMG has been working on in the past and try to see if we can get those upstream uh, into AOSP uh, uh, for Hikey. Um, and then also just bugs as they come up. Um, so one of the reasons why I think that, you know, Hikey is kind of useful here um, is, yeah, it is just another dev board. But when you look at, like, the current Nexus devices uh, that are now about a year old, um, when they came out, they were using a kernel, the 310 kernel, which was basically two years or over two two years, almost two and a half years old, um, on the day that they came out. So now that kernel is, you know, basically almost three and a half years, and, you know, if you have another year on it, we're getting close to almost five years. And LTS really only gets support for two or more years, depending on who's actually involved. So let's hope that somebody's, you know, working hard to keep those kernels uh, up to date and safe. Um, also, the latest flagship devices, which, you know, came out starting off, uh, you know, March uh, this year, um, they're released with the 318 kernel, which then is, that's sort of the leading edge of, of product-focused uh, kernels this year. And that kernel was a year and three months old at that point. Now, for Hikey, we were able to move to 4.4 um, in April, basically, and that's four months, which is still a little, little behind, I feel. But um, this basically puts us a year ahead of all of the devices that are coming out. And so in a lot of ways, we're out there making sure that the <coughs> current ASP kernels are being stabilized and, and really getting some validation um, before vendors have started tinkering with those. Um, and so in fact, we found a whole bunch of regressions in the Android 4.4 tree um, that was really useful to have Hikey in order to, to, to do for those validations. 
Um, and as in this picture too, you also see the little dotted line, um, you know, we also are following the mainline kernel. And we've been do it using that in order to catch a number of regressions that we've found uh, in the upstream kernels. And those are really nice because we're able to find those issues and immediately provide that feedback to maintainers and they usually get, you know, the reverts or the fixes as needed. Um, We've been pushing the high-key kernels uh, uh, upstream. This is kind of some of the progress that's happened across the various uh, kernel, recent kernel releases. Uh, in 4.9, we've got a whole bunch of stuff queued, um, so that'll be good. As far as the remaining to do for high-key, uh, for upstreaming, we've got about 50 patches. Um, the first two up there are queued already, or the first two sets are, are queued. Um, then it's basically gotten down to HDMI audio support, which is the ADV and the um, I2S driver. Uh, then the high-speed microSD, um, the USB speed audio negotiation, and then on, while um, for Debian devices that use Bluezy, uh, that firmware already works for uh, Bluetooth, um, but AOSP, uh, we still need to find a solution for uh, uh, loading the firmware. Um, so right now we're using the TI driver, which won't go upstream. And then of course the Molly driver, uh, which we can, we can dream someday. Um, that's about 15 patches out of the 50, but it's also about 90% of the diff. Um, now, part of the reason why I think that, you know, continuing to work on high key is really important is that for the most part, we kind of have these different communities and we've got these AOSP and hardware vendors that are very focused on kind of getting these products out and we've got the upstream kernel community that's, you know, got a different kind of view and they, they have different focuses and this is, this is very normal. It, it's understandable that the hardware vendors are going to be focused on, you know, their specific device, getting it out in six months. They don't care about any other devices. They want something that's fully enabled. They want low power. They want, uh, uh, you know, great graphics and, and low latency. Um, they don't really care that much about the kernel version they're using. Um, but the upstream kernel, they really care a lot about the long-term maintainability and you know, who's gonna, hand, who's gonna ha you know, maintain this code for the next 10 to 20 years. Um, any changes have to not affect other devices. Um, it, you've gotta be using the latest kernel or nobody really cares about what your changes are. And, and even though you know, maintainers do uh, care about all architectures, for the most part, they're running x86 on their desktops. So they, 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 they do kind of have a, a natural preference for that. Um, and so it's just difficult to find places where these two groups actually kind of share a lot of interests. And so I feel like Heike actually does create a little bit of an overlap because we can have an affordable device that's available, that's an interesting architecture, it is fully enabled, it can work against the latest uh, long-term stable or head, Linus head kernel. And this basically allows us to do validation both against the latest AOSP as well as against the latest mainline kernels. And so this is something that I think is really useful and kind of part of Lenaro's function here is to kind of build bridges between these different communities. Um, so that's it, thanks so much. I'm gonna move on over if you want, find me in the hallway. <laughs> Hi everybody, uh, my name is Sherban I and I work uh, together with uh, Bero and John in the um, um, LMG team. So um, first of all, I'll tell you a bit about uh, what we do uh, on Arc in Linaro. So uh, we primarily work on two trees. Uh, one is the uh, Android tree, uh, which is focused on the next Android release. Uh, so we focus on improving the Arc performance for the uh, currently for Android O, but we also focus on delivering performance optimizations for ARC that could be used by you and other partners on their Android uh, trees, which are based on the current Android release, and those are uh, packaged up part of the uh, members in our confectionery release. So um, for those of you that are not familiar with the uh, AOSP release cycle, uh, I thought that this diagram might be useful. Um, so he, this one highlights the trees that we work on. So we work on AOSP Master, uh, which is basically the next uh, Android release. And then we also work on the uh, Android uh, Linaro M, uh, members LCR, which is basically uh, a fork of the current stable Android release. So we're a team of uh, 10 engineers, uh, some of which uh, are here today. Uh, you probably already saw uh, Shuliang's presentation. Uh, so we have Shuliang, uh, Julian, Artyom, and Tony here, uh, as well as um, various other uh, members of uh, our um, neighboring teams. So we're mostly a team of uh, ARM assignees, 
uh, but we also have contributions from Spectrum and MediaTek. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for your con contributions uh, to the art project. So uh, here's a highlight of what we have done since the, the last Connect. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned in the first slide, we uh, delivered various performance improvements uh, for Android Master, uh, but as well for the um, members LCR3. But not only that, uh, we have improved our uh, benchmarking infrastructure and we have added uh, quite a thorough number of, of benchmarks, some of which you saw in uh, Shiliang's presentation. Um, we have, uh, together with the help from the automation team, and I would like to thank uh, Vishal, Daniel, uh, Milos, and Antonio uh, for all the help uh, that they've put, it, put into this. Um, so um, we have uh, a tool which we call R Reports, which helps us uh, benchmark and monitor uh, the performance of the art badges. And I'll be presenting that on Friday, part of the demo day. And uh, furthermore, uh, we have almost completely um, rewritten our, some of our continuous integration scripts. Uh, and with that, we have improved stability and reproducibility. But not, on, not only uh, the work that we have done on the infrastructure, uh, we have also contributed uh, some useful uh, investigations. Um, one of uh, the, the first one that I would like to mention um, looks at the performance differences between 32-bit and 64-bit. And as you all are aware, there are some natural performance differences, uh, but there are also things that we, will ha we would like to improve. Uh, so this, uh, this report that our team put together and which is available for Linaro members, it is, it is a useful source of information for things that we need to improve for 32-bit. <coughs> Furthermore, uh, Xu Liang, who has presented here uh, just before this session, if you haven't seen it yet, you could go on YouTube and check it out or check the slides out. Um, but he has also put together a report on uh, most of the things that he has talked about in his uh, slide deck. So by the next connect, uh, we plan to uh, improve the performance of 32-bit uh, on AOSP Master. Uh, we plan on integrating the new uh, Vixel-based uh, backend, um, of which uh, Tony will be telling you more about uh, in the next days. But we also plan on improving the performance for the Android and uh, members LCR3. And obviously, uh, various other improvements uh, to the infrastructure, such as adding uh, probably uh, newer uh, Nexus devices or uh, other uh, platforms that might be of interest to us. So here's just a gist of the performance improvements uh, we have worked on uh, closely with, with Google, and in particular with the, uh, with the R team. So on your right-hand side, you have the performance differences between Android N and Android M, uh, measured on a Nexus 5 uh, A53 uh, CPU. And these are just uh, relative uh, differences between um, AOT uh, Android N and AOT Android M. So as you can see, there are performance improvements across the board for both 32-bit and 64-bit on various uh, benchmarking seats. And similarly, on the left-hand side, you have the improvements between the uh, members LCR and the AOSP Android M. So what you see on the left-hand side is basically um, the performance improvements that you can benefit of as uh, members of the uh, Linaro Mobile Group, part of the LCR3. So um, there are a few uh, of us here. Uh, we are happy to talk with you um, either part of this talk or um, as you see us around. So please, please feel free to ask us any sort of question uh, related to ARP. So as I mentioned, Shuliang just presented uh, the ARP JIT uh, uh, in Android N. Um, but there are a couple more presentations uh, that will follow on Thursday. So Tony would be presenting on the Vixel uh, programmatic assembler and disassembler. So this is the uh, assembler and disassembler that we currently use for ARM64 uh, optimizing compiler backend. Um, but soon we will also be using it for the 32-bit uh, ARM backend. And then RTM will be uh, sharing some of his insights in um, uh, running performance uh, and uh, investigations on the Android runtime. 
So with that, I'm happy to ha take any questions if you have um, some. Otherwise, we could all just go for lunch. Thanks. So last, we want to give a little outlook on what's going to happen next in LMG. Obviously, not all plans are finalized. A lot of things will still be discussed at the LMGSC sessions, but some things that definitely are going to happen is um, building AOSP with Clang Master and doing it all in CI. Stabilize it, including even getting the kernels to build with Clang and uh, making sure that we get a workable system from that. We are working on open source benchmarks so we can verify our work better without having to rely on proprietary tools. Then we will continue increasing upstream participation, improving LCR builds, adding patches as they go, optimizing things. We'll try to continue reducing the AOSP kernel patch backlog and also make a better effort at ge getting our AOSP user space changes upstreamed. And continue hell consolidation efforts so that one build can better run on multiple devices and getting the next LTS kernel supported uh, for Android and trying to get it into AOSP. Yeah, that's all. And if anyone has questions to any of the speakers, now is a good time to ask or just find us in the hacking room or come to the mini conference on Thursday. Okay, looks like we don't have any questions right now. So thank you for attending.